cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is something that I am a little bit nervous to talk about, but I feel like it's out in the interwebs, it's out in the ether, people are talking about it, they know about it, so um, I guess it's my duty to give you my side of the story. Hi, I'm Shane Townsend, and I am the vampire's girlfriend, and I'm also his donor. Oof, okay, and you know, your belief is not for me to dictate. So if you don't believe in this, that is absolutely okay. You're welcome in this space and you're welcome to be skeptical. I just hope that you're going to be kind. That's really all I ask. This is, this is brand new territory for me. Uh, I remember back in like the early to mid 2000s, I saw Don Henry on the Tyra Banks show. He was also on Mad Mad House on MTV. Um, I remember watching uh, Logan South and his now wife, Daily South, on True Life MTV. Um, and in the height of the Twilight craze, when I was a teenager, there was all of this interest coming out about vampires. We were so enamored and so wrapped up in this idea of falling in love with an immortal ethereal being that we just wanted so so badly for something like that to exist in the world and so all of these um, personalities started to crop up on mtv and online and claiming that they were living vampires and all of this stuff right i am a healthy skeptic which means that i believe in everything but I am always going to investigate it for myself. I don't just blindly believe. If you're going to look at me and you're going to say, Shane, I'm a peapod. I identify as a peapod and that's what I am. I'm going to look at you and say, yes, you are a peapod. You have every right to live as a peapod. I love you. I embrace your peapodedness. And, um, and that's just how I think it's supposed to be. And that if somebody identifies in such a way do you respect that? Do you research it? Do you embrace it? Or don't you? It depends on who you are. When I was seeing all of these, you know, personalities online and everything saying that, that this is how they lived and this was not only an identity but also a spiritual practice, um, of course, being the romantic than I am, uh, being the believer in magic uh, that I am, because I do, I definitely believe in witchcraft. I definitely believe in magic. I definitely believe in energy and all of that. So of course I went and I did my research. Um, I looked up people like Michelle Belanger and Father Sebastian. I kind of playfully hovered around the space of other kin just in just in a sense that I was just so interested and not in a sense that I was, you know, passing any kind of judgment or laughing at anybody or anything like that. Actually, it was the opposite. It was I too wanted so much to believe that something like this could exist in some kind of way. Fast forward 10-ish years, maybe more than that, maybe 15-ish years, I'm showing my age. Fast forward, um, I have now, been immersed as a person in paranormal romance and writing fantasy and writing you know fantasy fiction books and like you know um dreaming of this immortal otherworldly ethereal being right i have always been this person my entire life which i think is what makes this love story even more compelling i am flipping through tiktok and i see the vampire jack townsend on my for you page it, like my initial thought was not none nothing more nothing further than wow he looks like my main character this would be a really good um promotional opportunity like like in my you know headcanon he could be volic in this duet he'll never know he's you know often creating in his own space and it doesn't my duet will not ever impede on his life that did not happen <laughs> he sent me a comment and he was like oh this is adorable and i was like oh I have been caught. I've been caught. And as soon as Jack and I started interacting with one another and started talking, there was a voice, a little intuitive voice, this intuition in the back of my head. And it told me that Jack was one of these 
people who identified in this way. He was a Don Henry or a Logan South or a Father Sebastian or a Michelle Belanger, that he existed in this space. I just had a feeling. I was just like, I think that he is this. In Jack's videos, <laughs> you hear him talk about something called the beacon. The beacon is like an energetic signature that a person who identifies as an other kin person, a different souled person, um, it's an energetic signature that they put off. It could be a witch, it could be somebody who identifies as fae, it could be somebody who identifies as a vampire, wares, shifters. I, I'm learning so much about this space. There's so many different types of people. It's, it's something that they put off that like, you know, somebody like Jack can pick up on like almost right away and identify them and say, oh, I see you. You're somebody who is like me. You're not somebody who is altogether human, for lack of a better statement. Bear with me, bear with me. I'm going to get into this. Yeah, right. So I don't have the beacon. I don't have the sense. But as I started talking to Jack, I just, I had some kind of feeling um, because he has this kind of energy that is very overwhelming and all-consuming, which in hindsight is a very good way to describe him. But I'm, you know, I wasn't going to say anything right away. As we started talking more, as our friendship started to grow, and as I started to get to know him better, um, of course, as anybody would, he started opening up to me a little bit more. Our first conversation lasted two hours, two hours. And it was just more about storytelling. It was more about the craft of like writing and art and acting and all of that stuff. And then it was a much later conversation. I think earlier in that day, we were texting back and forth and I may have pushed the envelope a little bit. We were kind of like flirting and like, I said something to the effect of like, um, <laughs> I made like a vampire joke. I don't remember exactly what it was. I made like a vampire pun. Uh, and he was like, oh yes, I have this gazebo on my property. And like, you know, you'll be out there writing and then you can come in and get a drink. And then I said something to the effect of like, oh, well, I'll, I could be your drink or something really cheesy and like really corny. He was like, are you offering? And that was <laughs> the <laughs> instance that I like was for sure. Like I was like, okay, this, I think that my gut is right. So later that day we hopped on the phone and we were talking and he says, uh, I have to tell you something. And I was like, okay. And he goes, well, it's something about my, you know, belief system. And, you know, I'm really, I'm really kind of afraid to tell you because I don't want you to judge me. And I, and I think that you're so cool and I'm so, you know, whatever into you or whatever it was at the time, like I'm so whatever <laughs> that uh, I don't want to scare you away or anything. He didn't know at that time that like, I am a very kind of open-minded progressive person, or at least I hope to be, I like to be that way. I think, I think I am that way. Of course, no matter what he would have told me, I would have, you know, accepted him and would have proceeded regardless. Um, and so I was joking around and I was like, well, oh, like, you know, what is it like, you know, is it witchcraft? And he was like, well, it's something like that. And I was like, okay. And he was like, well, I practice <laughs> And I was like, what? And he goes, I practice <laughs> And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I practice vampirism. And I paused. I don't claim to be a witch. I don't, I definitely do not identify as a vampire whatsoever. Um, I don't, I believe in tarot readings. I believe in energy. I believe in, I definitely believe in manifestation. I think I'm really good at manifesting. I think anybody can tell you after watching this all play out, I am very good at manifesting, but I've never quite existed in this space. And I said, okay, all right. I said, I had a feeling. He goes, what do you mean you, you had a feeling? And I said, I just knew. And I really did. I really did know. Um, thanks to all of those people who came before him. I said, okay, all right, I accept you. And all right. I said, what does that mean? And he goes, well, I'm still figuring that out myself. And I said, okay. So we hung up. And the first thing that I did was research. I jumped online and I went on to websites like uh, Misanthropic Vampire. I went on to, you know, read stuff about the Black Veils online, anything that I could get my hands on. Um, and not foregoing anything unless it sounded really, really outlandish. And what I came away with was that similar to, I'm not going to say just like, because I don't know if it's just like, but similar to other things in this lane, 
that it is a spiritual practice based on the exchange and the transference of energy. Bottom line. So if you are sitting there watching this, and if you want to say, Shane, you're crazy. Jack, you're crazy. You guys, this is wish fulfillment. This is, you know, fantasyful thinking and all of this stuff. I don't blame you. And you're totally within your right to think that way. I'm not going to take that away from you. But I'll pose this. Do you believe in spirits, ghosts, energetic bodies, angels, demons, gods? Do you? Do you believe in any of those things? Did you know, here's here, did you know there is a hospital in Chicago, I want to say, that works Reiki into its uh, treatment care, into its, like, the way that they treat patients? Reiki and energy pulling and all of that you have any kind of like, you know, affirmative feeling about what I'm talking about, then what is stopping you from accepting this? And I'm just assuming that something is stopping you. Maybe nothing is stopping you. Maybe you already do accept this. The one thing, the one opposing thing that we come up against, I think in like lives or like when he's talking to people about this is like, oh, do you sleep upside down like a bat? Or do you sleep in a coffin? Or do you claim to be immortal? Or can you eat garlic? Can you go out in the sun? Blah, blah, blah. The living vampire is much more similar to a practicing witch than they are similar to a Hollywood vampire. Hollywood vampires don't exist. Hollywood vampires are fun. They're dress up, they are make-believe, they are fun, right? Living vampires are very similar and akin to, I think, a modern day practicing witch. So I came back to Jack and I said, oh, so you must be a ronin then. He was like, how did you know that? A ronin means it's somebody that doesn't belong to a coven or a clan or a house or a body of um, other people who identify in this way. It's just somebody who's on their own, doing their own research, um, coming up with their own path forward. He's like, yes, I'm a Ronin. I was like, okay. And I was like, so I think that makes me a swan. And he was like, how did you know this? You're doing your research. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking this seriously. I'm very invested in you. I think you're very compelling as a person, as a man. Um, and like, if we are to proceed forward in any capacity, friendship or otherwise, I think that I should know these things, right? Oh, by the way, a swan just means an ally. It just means somebody who is like, um, accepting of people who identify as living vampires. So my little like black swan pendant is just, um, it's a nice symbol of the fact that I um, and am not only an ally to Jack and Jack's love and all of that stuff, but also we, I guess we can get into this now. So I have, like I said, I'll just keep repeating this. I've never existed in this space in my life or I grew up in a household that was like of mixed religion. So like my dad was kind of agnostic, not practicing any kind of denomination. Um, my mom's side were all Jewish, um, but we never really practiced Judaism outside of like celebrating Hanukkah for fun. In my, in my house growing up, we had like a Christmas tree and a menorah sitting right next to it. And it drove my great grandmother crazy because she was like, how could you have a Christmas tree? We were like, because it's pretty. My house was also very progressive. We were very, very liberal, very progressive, very open and friendly to everybody. That's how I was raised. That's even how my grandparents were. If I told, if my grandparents were alive today and I told them, seriously and honestly that Jack identified as a vampire and grandma and poppy this is what this means I feel like they would be okay <laughs> I feel like they would be like all right <laughs> but you're safe right like this like this nothing's hurting you or okay oh that's very interesting my mom knows um and she was also very accepting of course she had a ton of questions and I answered all of them honestly and she loves Jack and is very accepting of Jack and believes Jack to her bones to her core and this is not like you know I'm not trying to be a Jack like apologist or like a, or defending his position I still never existed in a space that was super magical or super you know my mom never identified as a witch or like we never had tarot cards in our house or anything like that we never went that far i i encourage you guys to go over to jack's youtube uh video he goes into other topics that i'm not going to discuss here um but i will say that there are different houses and different branches of this uh just the same way that there are different denominations of any other religion or spirituality his 
branch is a sessionism. He has not been claimed by any house. No, no one has stepped forward and said, hey, you're welcomed into like this thing. Like, it's just, he's read all of these books and this is the uh, denomination that best resonates with him. This is more a religion more a spiritual path than other branches of this. Uh, he does identify as other kin. He doesn't believe that his soul is entirely like mine or like a normie normal person might be. From what he has described to me it is that he uh, expels energy or, or, or spends energy um, more than he can make it. I think a normal person can maintain their subtle body. They can move through life and feel relatively normal aside from like wanting to sleep or needing to eat or needing to, you know, recharge their battery or whatever, right? But an accession or a living vampire, even with doing those things, they still need something extra. They still need an external source of energy to pull into their subtle body in order to maintain who they are. I hope that I hope that makes sense. I might feel like I'm rambling. But anyway, so being a donor means that like there are days and it's it's not every day, it's every other day where he feels that his subtle body is drained or he has expelled so much energy. He he can't do enough to pull it back in himself or to make more himself or to maintain that himself that he needs to either feed ambiently so from like an ambient space like a grocery store or a concert or anywhere in public or feed energetically from a donor like myself and so what that looks like um for me is basically just like a fancy reiki session or maybe just a normal reiki session um if you see those people on tiktok that pull that energy pull and take the the negative energy str uh, strains out of you or however you want to like articulate that um, that is what he does. There's not so much motion involved in all of that stuff, but, um, but it's siphoning, it's siphoning energy. And it is, can actually be beneficial to me because what Jack is able to do is he is able to transmute negative energy. And I fully believe this because I felt it, I've experienced it. You can think it's placebo, you can think whatever you want. But in my experience, I think that this is absolutely accurate where he has been able to take, um, my anxious feelings, my depressed feelings, my heavier feelings, consume them into his subtle body, transmute them to be food for him, and that clears my energetic pathways and my chakras to make more positive energy so that I don't get these, I don't feel stuck anymore. My, you know, my heart chakra isn't blocked or my throat chakra isn't blocked or whatever. Does that make sense? And I just don't feel that same weight and that same heaviness. And you can attribute that to so many things, but I think that this plays into it in a major, major way. So for instance, like, can it go wrong? Yes, it can absolutely go wrong. So in the beginning of this video, I said that I was a healthy skeptic and that I need to kind of see it in order to believe it or experience it for myself in order to believe it. The way that I do that is that if you claim something like I've seen a ghost here, this place is haunted, then I'm going to go to that place and I'm going to experience that for myself. I'm not going to say that I don't believe you, but I'm going to say, oh man, this person said this place is haunted. I'm going to go and I'm going to do um, an investigation for myself because I want to experience what they've experienced. So if Jack says that he can do this, then I'm going to push it to the limit. And I'm going to say like, yeah, test me, try me. And most of the time he's like, Shane, you know, we've got to be careful. I can take too much. And you want to sit there and say, this person is crazy. This is crazy. I swear on, I, I'm not crossing my fingers. I swear on my life that it has gone awry. So one of the times that it went a little bit too wrong is that he was pulling and I was actually already sick. Um, I had like a stomach bug or whatever and like probably irresponsible to like pull when I am sick, but I, I d genuinely didn't care. Everything is, everything is consensual. Everything is me saying, yes, this is okay, we can do this. So I am there. And I'm like, no, like, uh, let's see, like, you know, um, I forgot what we were trying to like research or investigate or whatever, but there was something that had happened and I was trying to see, I'm like, no, you can pull more. Like, and because I was already stomach sick or because I was already at like a lower energy place, I fainted for the first time in my life. 
<laughs> I have never fainted before. It was the weirdest thing. So anytime I picture somebody fainting, it's just, okay, so your eyes roll back in your head and you just like daintily collapse. And like, it's very pretty and it's very like transatlantic in the 1920s. Like the room went up, like as if my eyes, I guess, roll back in my head. The world went up like this and I fell forward. And if he didn't catch me, I would have slammed my forehead on the floor. Like I fell, I went, I went down and I went like that. And it went white even, it went, it didn't even go black. Like my vision went white, it was the weirdest shit. And you know, that was when I was already sick. But the point is, is that he had, because he was pulling during that low energy place, it, I, that did happen. There is something called deep feeding where it's not just energy siphoning. It is where um, a living vampire will put their hands on you and siphon physically like they're they're not doing anything physically that you can feel but they're pulling with their you know while touching you um and we were doing that and little tiny purple zappy teeny tiny little like veins started to kind of like pop up on my chest and like i wish i had taken a picture i did not because we were in the shower but like, <laughs> but it's, but we both were, were like looking and like, it wasn't very noticeable. It wasn't like, it wasn't this thing that was like this big dramatic Hollywood moment of like, oh my God, these veins, you know, it was like these teeny tiny little purple, like capillary busted looking things. And we were watching this happen and he was like, I'm done. I'm done. This is weird. Like this, like even to him, like he tries to debunk himself all the time. And there are lesser things that have happened like, we walk into an antique store, which is rife with all kinds of energy. And I have this photo, I do have this photo, I'll find it, I'll try to edit it in, where Jack is showing his hands and they're all like um, splotched, like his hands are all splotched. And like, my hands don't normally do that if I don't, I don't have, that doesn't ever happen to me. And it always happens when we are either ghost hunting, doing something, some kind of paranormal thing, or going into an antique mall or an antique store like this, right? <sighs> so this is a favorite story that we tell on our lives and I'll put it on YouTube so that it can be, you know, referred to over and over again. I love this story. It is the car story. It is the first time, and I will be honest and he knows this, it is the first time I actually and truthfully, truly, truly believed him. I hate saying that. It's not that I didn't accept him, I accepted him. But like I said, it's it's something different when you experience it yourself. So this is the first time I, I guess I experienced it and had that belief for, for myself. So it was last February and it was snowing outside and we wanted to go on an adventure. We were, and I, I suggested, I said, let's go randonauting. Randonautica is an app where it is like you, you, you open this app and you close your eyes and you manifest something that you want to like experience or find or whatever. Randonautica plugs in random coordinates on your GPS map and it, and then you go to that place and you see if you see the thing that you're trying to manifest. There was one instance where a group of people were going randonauting and they actually did find uh, a dead body in a suitcase and it was investigated by the police and it was a murder case. So this did happen. You can look it up. It's Googleable. It's, it's all there. So we're like, okay, what are we going to manifest? What are we going to look for? And of course, the two of us are going to say, we are going to manifest a real life vampire. So we plug in the first coordinate, coordinate, and it takes us to some random place. And it's somebody's house. We're like, this is somebody's house. We can't go into somebody's house. Right? Okay, let's try again. Try again. Took it to somewhere else. Somebody else's yard, somebody else's house. We're like, okay, this is third time's the charm, right? We finally do it a third time. And we're driving down this road. It's a curved road. And it's snowing pretty hard at this point. It's getting dark. And the coordinates want us to go up this private driveway, like this narrow driveway up a hill to this larger house. And we pull over because we're like, okay, we can't go onto somebody's property because we don't do illegal things. And so we're on this bank of this curved road. We're like, oh, well, it's not working. So we better just go home. We veer into the road. And as we're doing that, this man is, is barreling down the road at like 90 miles an hour, like so fast that we had no idea that he was, we were, he was coming, right? So his car is going like this and we're coming out like this. And right at the last second, he swerves 
and stops in front of us and we're not all the way out on the road yet so we're like you know shaken up and he's kind of in front of us so jack starts to pull up make sure he's okay you know because it was kind of scary this guy gets out of his car and is raging like so fuming mad is screaming profanities we're both in the car so this man gets out of his car he goes to that person that stranger's house picks up their garbage can like this and holds it over his head and is walking toward the car our car screaming i'm like i'm like we're gonna die i should probably have mentioned earlier that because we were filming earlier that day uh jack was entirely in his vampire garb he had his fangs in, he had his eyes in. he was totally like vamped out right so he was like i'll just intimidate this guy but there's intimidation and then there's intimidation and as this guy is getting closer, that's when the energy in the car starts to change. I have experienced adrenaline before. I have experienced adrenaline rushes before. I know what that feels like. I can say very confidently, it was not that. This was something entirely different. I was not looking at Jack. I was looking at the guy approaching us and everything was in slow motion at this point. Everything was playing in like slow motion. As I'm looking at this guy and focusing here, I feel this wave of like cold, crash into the side of my head and into the side of my body just from the other side of the car just almost like a spirit had entered the car or something like this when they say that you're amongst like a spirit or like an entity or something in the room gets cold or there's like a cold spot it was like that but i'm like why aren't we moving why aren't we driving i'm not really processing the wave yet and i'm like why aren't we driving and i look over at jack and his face how do i describe this so we call this masking off and masking off is when the humanity goes and the face becomes more angular. The complexion becomes grayer. There is like a sinisterness that pushes forward and it's not that like the physical body changes that's not what this is i'm not a lunatic i swear to god the physical body doesn't change but the energetic subtle quality of the person changes and it is very uncanny valley that is the best way i can describe it it is very scary and i look over at jack and i'm like drive 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 and i look over at him and he is mask off and finally the guy gets to jack's side of the car to the driver door and finally i think jack was maybe going to plan on doing something different but because i was in the car and because that was a risk already he hit the gas and sped forward last minute it was a very last minute it was like a movie it was like the guy was right at the the driver's side door he hit the gas and we sped forward and as we're driving down the road and as we're going home, we didn't go home right away. We actually like drove past like the coast. We drove past the beach and everything because we were just both like this. And as we're driving, my back is like flushed like a cat, like a, like a scared cat, like flush against the, the door. And he was laughing. He was laughing. I'll never forget that. I'm looking at him and I'm like, what was that? And he goes, uh, well, well, yeah, that guy was crazy, right? Like that guy was like out of his mind. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, no, not that. I said, what was that? And then he knew what I was talking about. You have a wolf and they're wearing sheepskin and they're with a bunch of sheep and they're like, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep. And then, you know, eventually they take the sheep mask off and then all the sheep are like, it's a wolf, oh my God, it's a, <laughs> it's a wolf. And the wolf's like, no, 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 no. And they try to put the mask back on and they proceed as a sheep because, you know, they want to be a sheep or they want to be accepted by the sheep or whatever. Because they're not really inherently bad. Like, they're not, in a, they're not a bad wolf. So, like, the other sheep can, like, accept the wolf, but they'll always know now. Like, they'll always know now. And that's what happened. That's the car story. Um, this is my reality at this point. Um, <laughs> it's a little crazy. It is. Uh, certain aspects of my life that have changed. I was never nocturnal. I would always go to bed. I was, I was a grandma. I would always go to bed at like 10 o'clock at, uh, at night or like 930 or whatever. 
Um, and I would wake up early and I would go to work. Like I was like clockwork, you know, I wanted to be the, that girl or whatever that would like wake up early and have like a routine. Now we probably don't go to bed until like three or four in the morning, sometimes five in the morning, sympathetically nocturnal. Um, I get my best work done at night, which was never the case for me. It's a, an adjustment for sure. I have gone vegan. Um, I've never been vegan in my life and that's not inherently a vampiric thing to do. It's not really a vampire like a trait or whatever, but because Jack is vegan, I am also vegan. That's something that I've always really wanted to try. Um, and I think that how you take care of yourself and how you take care of your physical body does affect your energy signature. I think it must. Um, and yeah, and every, every couple of days, um, I get a fancy back massage. I <laughs> really, and that's really what it is. Or like I get, I get a Reiki session or an energy pull session. And you know, it's not really that outlandish. It's not anything that's like so out of this world, you know, crazy. Like, you know, I dress the same way that I have always dressed. He's alternative. He doesn't always go out in the things and stuff, right? So it's like, it's nothing that is really too unacceptable. Or if you, you know, believe in energetic beings that open and close your cabinet doors at night, then I think that this is very easy to digest, or at least I think that it should be. Um, and I have no problem donating energy as I do. Like I said, sometimes it's nice, especially when it, especially when it comes in the form of a back massage, like, okay. And in a way, I think that I have absolutely manifested this life. I think that I've absolutely attracted this for myself because I've always been, people in high school would have told you, I would, I was always the vampire girl, not the vampire girl, but the girl who liked vampires or whatever. Right. So I'm happy. I'm very happy. I love Jack very much. Yeah. So that's my truth. That's my side of the story. And that's my life as the vampire's girlfriend. Thank you for watching. Uh, we can't wait to see you in the Discord. We can't wait to see you on the Patreon, on the TikTok lives. And as always, we will see you on the other side of the veil.